we are in a kairos moment as the body of Christ listen to me your assignment tonight is to cry that that inner work of the spirit empowerment is not the problem it is the inner work there is a lot of debris that needs to be taken out of our life seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses the bible says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and then to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the bible says who is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame as powerful as God is when he became a man in the person of Jesus he did not come empowered by default even though he was the word he showed us how a man can stretch his capacity in the spirit until he's able to host the spirit without measure and the Bible says as he is so are we that means we can host heavier dimensions of the spirit by grace and administer it in such a way that imprints the name of the Lord over our generation I'm praying for you I don't know who is willing to join me on this cry tonight I don't know who is willing to join me on this journey to say I'm not satisfied Lord I I thank you for what you have shown me I thank you for what I have seen but I tremble before you tonight in sackcloth and ashes asking you by grace and by mercy that you will do that work of purifying you will do that work of sanctification you will do that work of renewal you will do that work of enlightenment and do that work of empowerment within my vessel within my person that i will give the holy spirit greater flow let the power that works within me be in such a degree and proportion that can allow the river flow to the nations open your mouth wherever you want begin to pray open your mouth wherever you want begin to pray according to the power that works within us it is a press for more a press for more a press for more hunger for greater glory unto him be glory in the church unto him be glory in koinonia through koinonia unto him be glory in my life and through my life take a minute to pray you're not wasting your time restore the flow of authentic apostolic power restore the flow of authentic manifestations of the power of God the investments of the spirit let it not be scarce in our generation again deliver us from being noise makers oh God and bring us to a place where we communicate the substance of the spirit life to our generation let the margin of error be covered let it be covered let it be covered let the margin of trial and error experimentation let it be eroded from our lives bring us to a place of accuracy and mastery bring us to a place of accuracy and mastery take a minute and pray ladies and gentlemen you are praying because you love God there is a dimension of prosperity that the church must capture it is important for kingdom come it is important for the betterment of believers there is a dimension of healing power that needs to be imported by aligned vessels there is a dimension of dominion a dimension of increase a dimension of invincibility over elemental forces this is our mandate in this season let a hungry believer pray let a passionate man of God pray take time to pray you're not wasting your time let's raise a cry as a global family raise a cry as a body of believers visit us oh God with your power genuine apostolic authentic power the power that is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think enlarge our capacities in the spirit 
to host greater dimensions of your glory indeed let the river flow let it flow to bring healing to the nations let it flow to bring healing to the families let it flow to bring healing to careers destinies let men again call upon the name of the Lord by the efficiency of our witness let many come to acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus pray do that inner work in me the work of purifying the work of cleansing the work of renewal the work of enlightenment expand my capacity in the spirit realign me realign me realign me realign me in the name of Jesus Lebrantas kabarantos kia de balakatos. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am encouraged and motivated to seek God the more because I have seen the benefits of seeking Him the way I sought Him yesterday. By mercy, it has brought me to this level. So I know. That if I refuse to be swallowed up by pride and holding on to shadows and I remain a student in the school of the spirit pressing with determination and desperation it means that which we have seen in the spirit will soon become our reality there are things I've seen in the spirit about my life and about this ministry that has not yet been made manifest my assignment is to partner with the spirit of grace since he has revealed it i know it is the will of god my assignment is to allow that river to flow my assignment is to allow that river to flow i have seen what god can do with a yielded vessel from scripture i have seen what god can do with a yielded vessel from history i have seen what god can do with a yielded vessel looking at our fathers they have shown us dimensions but even at that there is more and we are called in this season to expand we are called in this season to enlarge we are called in this season to not watch people who should be alive die people who should be healthy sick people who should be wealthy poor people who should be manifesting dominion kept down and bound in chains and yet we continue to cry out and make mockery of ourselves vocally advocating the liberty that is in Christ here is the generation that is determined to change that narrative I pray for you in the name that is above all names and by the power that raised Christ from the dead as the Spirit of God is recruiting men to this unique school of the Spirit that will emerge a certain species of believers Believers who become worthy hosts of his presence and power. I pray for you by mercy and by your determination. May you be found to be one of those students. May you be found to be one of those students. May you be found to be one of those students. May you be found to be one of those students. Of those students. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, when God begins to invest his power upon men it will not all end in the pulpit God will use men to make statements upon the earth some of them will be an embodiment of his wealth mysteriously blessed by their lives they will they will they will make men to question economic principles beyond imagination not to mock them but to tell them there is more than economics dimensions that cannot be explained by men yet wrapped up with great godliness and humility I tell you such men will arise even from this house let me encourage the body of Christ in one minute be careful when you put a full stop to spiritual things don't use science to conclude on spiritual things for instance 
when it has to do with the subject of wealth wealth answers to value correct wealth answers to relationships correct wealth answers to knowledge correct wealth answers to productivity correct but if that is all you know about wealth go and sit down learn from the spirit there are virgin dimensions beyond the scope of what i just explained it would be foolish to imagine that is all about god's economy mm -mm. there is a lot more if all you know about ministry is excellent administration that is correct sound communication of doctrine that is correct but if that is all you know sit down there is still more to learn there is still something called the hear ye him anointing the mystery that compels men vetoes the incompetences of men and still brings them if all you know about raising children is to teach them the bible that is correct if all you know is taking them to a good school that is correct if all you know is giving them your love as a parent that is correct but if that is all you know sit down there is still a lot more the challenge with the body of christ is because of our stuntedness in growth we look to the dimensions that are currently available and we have put a full stop to mean this is the only way god operates it's a big mistake there is a generation that will introduce aspects of god that science cannot explain aspects of god that the financial world will not be able to explain many years ago the lord showed me a vision and told me something he said there are seven dimensions of wealth and the body of christ and even creation as we know today is only in the third dimension so let's be careful when we conclude and say some things can never be done if you want to prosper the way is to get a job you are right depending on what dimension you see things from there are accelerator systems that will be released in this end time you will see people step into levels that defy economic explanations not to downplay on the lesser but to show that in the economy of the spirit there is always a greater that you will never plateau with god all you see is not all there is there are ways to do ministry that are about to be introduced that will shock you but the results will be undeniable all we have seen is not all there is until the word of faith came we never knew that there could be certain dimensions of god until the charismatic move came we never knew there would be certain dimensions of god let me tell you this let us be careful while appreciating what god has done and not in an attempt to remove the ancient landmarks let's keep our heart open the spirit is still working he's an intelligent spirit he knows that time is against us there is already a redemption strategy within our economy be careful so that you don't allow people make you feel you have to wait 25 years before you become blessed i agree on that formula it has worked for many maybe it worked for those who were not oppressed of demons maybe it worked for those who started investing at age eight but you right now with the emergency that confronts you you follow that formula you will die without prospering there has to be another way if god is god let him show that his el shaddai there are still parts of god we have not seen economically there are still parts of god we have not seen ministerially nothing god does today or tomorrow will contradict scripture but even this scripture you see there are layers our eyes have not seen rise up on your feet no eye has seen no ear has heard what god has prepared for me so i submit to your work in me till christ be formed in me no eye has seen no ear has heard what god has prepared for me so I submit to His work in me Till the Christ be formed in me One more time No eye has seen, no ear has heard What God has prepared for me So I submit to His work in me Till Christ You have given me a destiny, a purpose to fulfill. So with all I am, 
Every breath with me I'll spend my life to see Jesus revealed And Jesus glorified Jesus revealed And Jesus glorified Jesus revealed Whilst you're standing or sitting, whatever position, I just want you to take a minute and ask the Lord to use you. That this message tonight will not stand against you when God is saying, you heard this, and yet I did not find an aligned vessel in you. You heard this, and yet you did not bring me glory through your life. Hearing what you are hearing tonight is like giving you five talent. Hearing what you heard tonight is like giving you two talent. Hearing what you heard tonight is like giving you one. Make sure you do not make the mistake of the man with one. Don't go and bury it. You bury seeds, not talent. You trade talents. You transact with them until they yield. You war with them until they bring profit. I'm available. Let that circumcision of the Holy Spirit by the Holy Spirit happen within your inner man and unlock virgin channels allowing the life and the power, the wisdom, the grace of God to flow through you in you and from you to the nations thereby bringing glory to Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you and it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear so, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily. Remind yourself of God's truth and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. 
Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.